and you close your eyes, just tell yourself you're the only person in here that you have to pay attention to. You don't have to worry about anybody else, anything else going on around you, the sound of the plane, the weather outside. You want to focus directly on your mind. If you have trouble focusing directly on the mind, you focus on the breath first, because that's right next to the mind. Watch the breath coming in, watch it going out. Let it come in in a comfortable way and out in a comfortable way. Try not to force it too much. Just pose the question in the mind, what kind of breathing would feel really good right now? And see how the mind responds. If there's no response, try adjusting the breath a little bit. Think longer, think shorter, and see if the breath responds to that. Deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter. Because the breath energy here is something that's totally free. And it can be a good place to stay, and it can be a really uncomfortable place to stay. And it's up to you to pay attention to it, because it's the amount of attention you pay that's going to make all the difference. Otherwise, there are times when it's good and times when it's bad, depending on the state of your body, the state of the mind. You can't really rely on it. But if you pay attention to it, you can make changes. And this is a really important principle in the meditation. We're not here just to watch things come and go without interfering with them or without doing anything at all. We're not here to be totally passive. We're here to notice that we do have a role in shaping our experience. And it's where you pay attention that makes all the difference, and how you pay attention. In the case of the breath, you're paying attention in a way that uses the breath to create a sense of well-being in the body, and then that sense of well-being in the body can begin to seep into the mind. So you feel comfortable staying here, that it feels like it's a good place to stay. You're happy to stay here. And then you can start seeing what else the mind is doing in the present moment as it shapes its experience. The way we think about things, the way we feel about things, the perceptions we apply to things, the labels we apply in the mind, all of these have a huge impact on what we're going to experience. It's like different people and different animals going through the same city. They're all going to notice different things because of the power of perception, the things they're interested in. And the same principle applies to your settling down in the present moment. There's a lot going on right here, right now, and it's up to you to decide where to focus your attention. This is why the Buddha taught the Four Noble Truths. He said, right here is the big issue. There's stress and suffering, and there's a cause to it. You can see it acting in your mind. You can also develop qualities in the mind that'll help you let go of those causes, so you can put an end to suffering. Those are the issues to focus on right here, right now. As for other issues, you can put them aside for the time being. Work on solving this problem of why you create unnecessary stress and suffering for yourself, because you're not the only one who suffers. When you place big burdens on your mind, other people around you are going to get burdened too, and you're in. in a worse position to help them, because you've got so much weight weighing you down. But if you can take the weight off your own mind, then you find that you're in a better position to help other people. You're not leaning on them. They're not going to be a victim of your greed, aversion, and delusion. So looking after your mind is not a selfish thing. It's actually a really good gift to yourself and to the people around you. But it does require that you know where to look in the present moment and how to look, because that makes all the difference. <laughs>